When you first enrolled at Coastal, you received a copy of the Code of Student Conduct. This Code of Student Conduct states that academic dishonesty includes plagiarism, cheating, attempted cheating, and all other forms of academic dishonesty. In this video, we're going to focus on plagiarism. So let's begin with a definition. Plagiarism occurs when you use information from another source and then fail to give proper credit to that source, usually through a citation. It doesn't matter if you copy information word for word or if you change or rearrange words. If you fail to give credit, it's still plagiarism and you can still get in trouble for it. There are two types of plagiarism. The first, intentional plagiarism, occurs when someone purposely tries to pass the ideas of others off as their own. And the second, unintentional plagiarism, occurs when someone doesn't understand plagiarism well enough to know that what they've done is in fact plagiarism. Both intentional and unintentional plagiarism are wrong. Avoiding either type begins with knowing what plagiarism is and ends with always remembering to cite your sources. So now that you have some basic knowledge about what plagiarism is, the next step is learning strategies for avoiding it. First, put down the copy and paste. Second, use quotation marks. Third, paraphrase or summarize. Fourth, Make it about you. And finally, cite your sources. Let's talk about these five strategies in a bit more detail. Strategy one, put down the copy and paste. While copy and paste is a great shortcut for capturing and transferring works and images, using it too much can lead to situations where you might lose track of where the original text came from or that it originally came from someone else's work at all. Making notes on what you're reading, rather than lifting it completely from the original source, will help you process and understand the information, so when it does come time to write your paper or give a presentation, it will be easier to resist the impulse to take a shortcut. Strategy two, use quotations. What's tempting about using the exact wording from the original source is that the author may have made the exact point you wanted to make, but you just couldn't find the right words to say it. And when they've already said it so well, making changes may just seem like a waste of energy. The good news is that it's okay to use the original author's exact wording, but only if you remember to put quotes around it and give proper credit. This shows you not only have good taste, but you also know how to give credit where it's due. Strategy three, paraphrase or summarize. Quoting is all well and good, but it's not as though you can string together a bunch of quotes and just hand in that for your assignment. You need to show your own thinking as well, including the connections you're making between the readings you're doing and the ideas you're learning. Instead of using direct quotes, you can paraphrase or summarize the original source in your own words. Keep in mind that paraphrasing is more than just changing a few words or rearranging the ideas. It's okay if the ideas are someone else's, so long as the citation is in place and the words are your own. Strategy four, make it about you. When it comes to the paper you are writing, remember that you are the star. Your paper should be all about you, your ideas about what you're learning in class, your interpretation of the sources you found, and the connections you are making between all of these things. You are showing what you know and how you know it. Remember that the sources you use are there to support your ideas and thoughts, not the other way around. Strategy five, cite your information. In writing, citation serves two purposes. The first is to give credit to those whose works we have used in our own writing. The second is to tell your reader where you got your information, so if they want to look further into the topic, they know where to find it. For these reasons, citation is the only surefire way to avoid plagiarism. It tells your readers where you got your information and where they can get it too. Accurately formatting citations can be tricky, but luckily there is help. Your instructor will tell you what format to use, usually either APA, MLA, or Chicago style. Once you know which format you're using, there are online and print materials that will tell you how to cite a variety of sources. There are also writing tutors and librarians on campus who can help you get it right. 
As a note, if you choose to use a citation generator to create your citations, remember that the citations they give you will often contain errors. So you always want to check those citations to make sure they're accurate and then you're good to go.